Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Uh, today we're going to do another little scenario where we will try to attack uh, London as Russia. So what does Russia have currently that could, on a somewhat short notice, actually strike uh, this, like uh, London itself? Um, so of course there's Kaliningrad, so they have some, some land-based options here. Um, as we've discussed previously, the uh, Shahids uh, or Giran twos, they can uh, technically reach out and hit most of the UK. And um, then there's also the, the Iskanders, Iskander K, so the cruise missiles. Um, the new variants, they have like a range of, uh, let me see, oh, it's like over, over a thousand nautical miles, miles actually. They're pretty similar to the uh, naval. Um, the naval caliber missiles and they can also reach uh, the United Kingdom. Um, the ballistic missile version at this point cannot. So um, if we want to fire ballistic missiles we would have to do uh, air launched ones and uh, in this case I don't have any here but the, um, the MiG-31 based um, Kinjals that were briefly stationed in Belarus they can also hit the UK. But um, yeah, I haven't done any of those today because, to be frank, I don't know what the uh, what the Brits would do against something like this because they don't really seem to have any uh, ballistic missile defense, uh, at least none that I could find. Um, then, of course, there is the air-launched cruise missiles KH-101, KH-555, uh, launched from uh, from Tupolev uh, 95 Bears, and they would come from here, Engels Air Base, and they also have over a thousand nautical miles so uh, of range, so they could easily hit the, the UK too. Problem is, um, of course, all of these missiles would pass over NATO countries, so they would probably get spotted. Um, so the idea here is that mm, why not just turn it into a purely naval-based operation? So we are actually going to get rid of these two. And um, yeah, we're actually going to use the Northern Fleet uh, for this operation. So what assets could theoretically be there? Um, if we take a look at the Northern Fleet, um, they have quite a number of ships. Let me see, that's submarines here. So this is actually where the um, where their aircraft carrier, the Kuznetsov, is stationed. Um, we're not going to have it in the fleet this time. We'll have the Piotr Veliki as a uh, as a flagship, and then um, just a couple of uh, cruisers. We, I think we have one of the uh, these destroyers here too. Um, problem is they cannot really. Uh, like um, they will not have anything that can strike uh, at that distance, right? So because if you look at the map, it's about uh, yeah. Right now we're like 900 nautical miles away. So to uh, to strike London from that distance, the only real option that they have is um, let me see where is it? This one, the Caliber, with uh, 750 nautical miles range. It's essentially just a cruise missile. It's very similar to the Tomahawk, I would say. Um, and not a lot of their ships actually carry it. It's like, in this case, just the Gorshkov frigates. And uh, we've talked about them before. They're like mo one of the most modern ships that uh, the Russians have. And in this uh, fleet, we have two Gorshkov frigates. Um, and they both, like, two, uh, both of them carry uh, 16 calibers each. And then we have two submarines that carry um, uh, conventional cruise missiles, the Yasen class, and it's the Severtvinsk and uh, Kazan. Uh, and we have them here. Both of them will be um, represented by uh, Severtvinsk, uh, but this one is supposed to be the Kazan. And both of them carry um, 24 cruise missiles each, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, so they started out with like 16 or something, but uh, and had more anti-ship calibers. So I just shifted it around a bit, so we have more cruise missiles. All right. Okay, let's take a quick look at the rules again, same as always. Uh, we're working with a 12-hour time limit uh, between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. local time. So one busy night of uh, air defense, essentially. 
um, there are 10 ground targets in London that we want to hit. That will determine the score, and uh, yeah, they're not going. They're not going to be any manned aircraft involved in this. It's just, uh, it's just uh, cruise missiles, and we will have 80 of them in total. As I said, we have two submarines, 24 each, um, and they will be launched, as you can see, from different angles. So uh, the the Brits essentially have to find uh, all of the. Um, the little clusters in time and then defeat them uh, in order to to save their uh, buildings in London. And then, um, yeah, we have the Northern Fleet or the Piotr Veliki as a flagship and uh, the Kazat uh, Kazatonov uh, with 16 caliber missiles and the Gorshkov with 16 caliber missiles, a total of uh, 80 caliber missiles uh, employed, which is pretty pretty standard, like standoff strike. If you look at what's going on in uh, in Ukraine right now. Okay, so um, what do the British have to defend themselves? Let us take a look. So first of all, just zooming in on London itself. The map will update. Yeah, there it is. Um, so what do we want to hit? The uh, the targets today will be um, two power stations here and here. Then, um, yeah, a little palace building over here. Uh, is that a railway station? A very large leadership compound, um, a railroad road bridge, another railroad station, a tall building, another tall building, and some random large bridge over here. And let us see what about ground-based air defenses so one thing that the brits have is this um star streak system and i put one here as in the manpad version and i put one here in a like um vehicle based uh, version um they are actually pretty cool they um they're very fast and they essentially carry three little sub munitions uh in the um in the projectile which will then independently go after the target. The problem is, um, they are essentially laser guided by the um, by the um, the base system. So you have to uh, point a laser at the target the whole time. And uh, if you lose if you lose sight of the target, you cannot paint it anymore. Then uh, the missile will not be able to uh, will not be able to hit it. And as you can imagine, that is not very good for cruise missiles because they're low, they're small. And they're very fast. So um, in the, uh, in um, command, they actually can can't even attack. Um, I think they're not even able to attack. Uh, yeah, that's like the three little sub munitions here. And uh, yeah, they will attack aircraft and they will attack helicopters, but not um, not uh, cruise missiles or some anything like that. Um, yeah. But I'm pretty sure if you're a helicopter, these are uh, really bad because they move at crazy speeds like compared to a Stinger or an Igla. Um, all right, so they're just here for decoration, essentially. Um, then what else do the Brits have? Um, this is a little bit of an older one. They're actually f uh, phasing it out, the, the rapier system. I don't know if it's actually gone already or if they still have some, but uh, I'd assume they still have a few of them and one of them is deployed over here. Um, these are essentially like they're older style um, uh, air defense systems. Um, they are technically radar guided, but it works a little bit like with a um, like with a Patriot system. So the missile itself doesn't have an active radar. Also, it's not just following like uh, um, a fire control radar um, uh, paint like. Um, it's not like the the target itself is being uh, illuminated and the missile is shoot, is going for the illuminated target. The fire control ra radar will track the target and uh, then transmit the, the the flight course to the missile via data link. So the missile itself is essentially blind. Um, yeah, that's basically how it works. That means the ground ground station has to be able to see the target over the in the whole time. Um, which is not ideal if you're going after, like for for what we we're going to use it. But it it works. It can hit a cruise missile. Um, range isn't super impressive. 
And then what else do the Brits have? They have this Sky Saber system, and that is super new. Um, and it's going to replace the rapiers. Um, and they essentially make use of um, that missile that they've been, uh, or this missile family that they've, that they've been developing, the CAMM, which is kind of like a short to medium range uh, air defense uh, missile that they're going to use on ground, uh, like uh, ground-based and sea-based. Um, and then they call it the um, the sea scepter and the land scepter. And uh, yeah, this missile has like a lot of ASRAM DNA in it, um, but it's not identical. Also, it doesn't have a um, it doesn't have a um, infrared seeker. It's actually uh, an active radar seeker. So like uh, uh, so, you have a um, fire control radar, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, actually, it's just like a it's a target indicator. Okay, so um, it will lock on the target. It will launch, go to. Uh, go to the uh, to the right place to intercept it and then switch on its own radar essentially go pitbull and then uh, that's how it's going to guide like do the terminal guidance essentially um yeah what else to say about this uh, range isn't super impressive um let me see what did they say uh 15 nautical miles like that's uh yeah medium range to uh, low like uh, short range i would say um, yeah, so that's basically it for land-based. What else do we have? Um, we have some ships. As you may know, the Brits have um, these uh, Type 23 Duke frigates. They're mostly anti-submarine warfare. And they'll be out here looking for the submarines, to be honest. And then they have the Type 45 uh, destroyer, which is uh, and that one has some uh, some air defense capabilities. So they're using the Aster 30 missile, and uh, in this case, this is a kind of new one which already uses the Sea Scepter for close range. Um, over here, we have our little surface group with the um, uh, with the um, Queen Elizabeth carrier. And this one is accompanied by a Type 45 with um, Aster 30 and Aster 15. So it has uh, uh, good air defense potential. Um, problem is, is it going to be in range to engage any of the, uh, of the missiles? Uh, we'll see about that. Um, also, we have a little complement of um, F-35. Come on, where's the carrier? Which will they will be on air patrol? Um, I don't know how many of them they could scramble in on short notice. Which how many would be ready to actually uh, participate? In this case, I'll always have like a pair of uh, like a pair of um, F 35s in the air, and if one pair is done, they will return to base. Um, at the same time, there will be um, Eurofighters like uh, Typhoons, and for them it's the same. You will have two pairs in the air um, they will have meteors and uh, I think they should also have SRAMs yeah same with the uh, with the F-35s and yeah they'll be on combat air patrol um, again I don't know how many of them would be ready uh, on short notice also if you look at the um, if you look at Google Maps um, in 2023 uh, both of the British carriers were over here. Um, don't know how realistic it would be to to move one of them uh, into the North Sea at, uh, at short notice. But yeah, in this case, it ended up over here. Um, all right. Um, also, one thing to note is um, the Brits used to have uh, AWACS. Um, they are they had the uh, basically just the sentries. Um, and apparently they're supposed to switch over to veg tails and the idea was to fa uh, like um, decommission the, the sentries uh, when the wedge tails uh, start operating but apparently like the wedge tails were delayed and the sentries are now completely out of commission question mark um, in this case I will just assume that they have some some sentries uh, in service and they will be doing uh, AWACS stuff um, yeah, they have uh, an Elan platform, the rivet joint, not going to make much of a difference in this case. We have a tank line and uh, we'll do some uh, Reaper-based uh, reconnaissance and they will actually go out and try to find the surface fleet because the idea was to have uh, a little 
a little Counter-Strike lined up from over here, um, from uh, Eurofighters, and the idea was to basically do an anti-shipping anti uh, mission uh, in case the, the surface group gets detected or spotted. The uh, problem is, uh, I don't really know what they would be using because there's no real good, uh, no real good naval uh, like naval strikes uh, loadout here. I mean, the F-35s are the same; they don't have anything that's really uh, well suited. Um, I think the Spear Three is supposed to do that job at some point, an AT nautical mouse range. Uh, so that would be fine, but it's I think it's delayed until the like late. 2020s, like uh, 2028 or something. So yeah, it's not available. The Storm Shadow is nice, a nice cruise missile, but it cannot strike naval targets, so uh, useless in this case. So what do they really have? I mean, they have Brimstone missiles, and they have um, uh, they have the uh, Paveway. What's this called? This one uh, with 15 nautical miles range, and the Brimstones have like 25. So yeah, with two Gorshkov frigates in that fleet, uh, we're not even going to get close. Um, so to be honest, I will just uh, cancel this little mission right now because it's completely pointless. Uh, yeah, so if there are any Brits watching this, uh, please let me know how you're, uh, like, how are you planning on sinking ships? I can't really see how it's going, how it's supposed to work. All right. Um, I think this is it, so let's get into the game, I would say. Okay, everything set, ready, go. So our first job will be to get into launching, uh, like into range to launch our missiles. And for the surface group, that's actually, um, like right now, they're what, almost a thousand nautical miles off. Um, they will need to make some ground, so I'll just put them to full speed. Um, this submarine is going to be fine. They'll stay sh in shallow waters. And, uh, yeah, this is basically what it's going to be for the first, I think, four or five hours. Uh, we're just going to slowly make our way into position and hope that the, the Brits are not going to find us because they are going to, like, actually look for us. Alright, so it's now um, 21.11, so just after 9pm. Uh, it's getting late. I um, guess we're just going to speed it up. Probably until 3.30 or 4.30 or something. Alright. All right, it is now three, almost 3.30 uh, in the morning. And let us see, got mode off. We are still not in range, so we'll probably have to fast forward another uh, hour or so. Okay, 5.30, uh, it's actually pretty late. All right, so I guess let's, key, let's start launching some missiles. So as you can see here, the Gorshkovs are the ones that have the missiles. Uh, we'll just go and uh, launch them like this. Uh, so let us see what is the range. It's like 680. This one is at 660, so we just need... And then we will start our missiles from the submarine, like this. And this one is at 520, which will be about here. Looks good. So all the missiles are launched. They are on the way to uh, to their targets. And let's see what this is looking like from the British point of view. For now, they can't see anything. So uh, yeah, 
So what's going to make the difference here? The question is, um, I mean, there's one one big cluster of missiles coming from here, and it is going to pass over this uh, this area with the um, with the surface group and the Queen Elizabeth and um, all the um, all the aircraft that we have on air patrol. Um, this is definitely going to get spotted early, and it will get destroyed. Um, the question is, can we find the one that's coming from here early enough? Um, and can we kill it mostly with aircraft? Because the, as you can, like, as you've seen, like there's just not that many missiles here in the two systems we have at London ground base. So um, they have to be uh, like in reserve for the missiles that are coming from the west. Essentially, if we need, if we use up too many of them from that group that's coming from here, then uh, yeah, we're going to lose a lot of buildings. All right, let's see. All right, we found our first missiles. So who spotted them? Uh, it was the, the Eurofighters with their radars. And they are now shooting their MRAMs. Uh, let's see how that pans out. So this is the cluster of missiles that came from the Gorshkov frigates. And as you can see here, this is the first cluster. The second one will be a little bit behind the first one. There they come. All right. Moving in for an ASRAM range. Also, they'll have to lose some altitude because these are uh, these, like their terrain following. They'll be at, uh, in this case, 180 feet above the ground. This is our Type 45 shooting Aster 30s. going to get that one pretty sure uh, yeah it's pretty annoying like uh, air to air missiles and like just generally uh, missiles just don't work very well at those uh, like out altitudes like this and the, uh, the atmosphere is so so dense that they just lose all of their all of their speed all of their kinetic energy almost immediately and then uh, yeah that's basically how they maneuver and how they manage to intercept their targets. So they want to be operating at high altitudes, not like just above the ground. More meteors out. Let's see. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of misses. Well, there come the Fox 2s, and they got it. Okay, Fox 2s in this case is probably Asrams. Yes, it's Asrams. Okay, so that was the, um, the cluster of missiles from the surface group. Uh, we still cannot see anything from the two submarines. Uh, let's see. There, they found them. And that is pretty late, I have to say. Like, I've tested this a few times. Uh, if they find them that late, it's probably not going to... Uh, the outcome is not going to be very, very good. So, let's see. So, we have some meteors in the air and another flight of typhoons ready and uh, fully loaded. Um, do we have any F-35s? No. These ones are, yeah, they're not engaging. So two flights of Eurofighters will have to make the difference. Who's actually detected them? Yeah, it's like the, uh, the Eurofighter with um, infrared. Problem is, uh, I mean, the Meteor has, it's basically like a little cruise missile. It has, uh, it's actually still powered, as, if, as you can see. So. They're actually not too bad here, like performance-wise. Uh, yeah, that's actually a pretty, pretty good score. But now it's down to the Asrams. Oh, oh, we missed uh, a little bit of a story here. So um, yeah, that is the group, uh, the group of missiles coming from the west. Uh, so we didn't time them perfectly. 
um, they are getting engaged by the um, by the Sky Saber system. And uh, yeah, let's see how that works out. Rapier is also trying to get one. Problem is the rapier will uh, be able it will be able to hit stuff um, if it's coming right at it. Uh, like if it's going like this, uh, it's not going to it's not going to hit anything. It still has some missiles in the, uh, in the magazine though. Uh, the sky saber is completely empty, so uh, yeah, maybe not waste your missiles. This one is going to hit. So we had one hit at the power station in the west, and we'll get another hit on the power station in the east. Oh, it malfunctioned. Okay. So how many missiles left on the uh, the northern submarine? Quite a few. All right. Let's speed it up a little. Your fighters are getting closer. Maybe they can catch one or two. Come on. Yeah, they're firing hot streets. Yeah, that's the problem, as you can see here, like, the the Azram, uh, it lost its, like, a proportion ran out of fuel, and it's literally just getting stuck in the atmosphere, like, uh, like, as if it was, like, swimming through jelly or something. It loses all its speed, and then cannot keep up. Rapier is doing some work. Uh, mostly missing. Come on. Can we get one? Come on, we have to kill one at least. Yes. Speed it up a little more. Yeah, that's probably all the missiles we're going to get. And we're getting hit. And smack. Actually, not too bad, to be honest. Let's see. A lot of them malfunctioned, apparently. Uh, let's see. Yeah, what did we lose? Uh, how many buildings left? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we lost four buildings. It's actually not not a great score uh, for the caliber strike, even though uh, they were detected pretty late. So, yeah, not too bad. Okay, so the final tally, four buildings were destroyed, um, another three damage, but for now we're not really counting that. Uh, overall, not, not a great result, uh, considering how many, how many missiles we fired, but yeah, we probably got a little lucky in different, like the Brits probably got a little bit lucky in different areas. Uh, so yeah, I've played this a few times and it can totally go uh, differently. It can also, like, you can also end up losing all buildings. It's totally possible. It really depends on uh, when the cruise missiles get detected and uh, where the planes are at that point. So, and how many of them can engage. Because in the end, like, the two ground-based systems that can actually hit the cruise missiles it's just they just don't have a lot of ammo so uh, yeah they get uh, they get saturated pretty easily all right so that was it for today i'll see you next time